Hi, uh, this is Greg Shaw. I'm here to show you and to talk about uh, how Forward can be used uh, to implement a complete drop-in replacement for uh, your ABL GUI. So if you recall, Forward provides 100% uh, automated conversion from ABL source code to Java source code. And um, I've previously shown a demo of, of how um, the character mode or Chewy code runs. In this um, video, I'm going to show how the GUI runs, the converted GUI. Um, so, I mean, let's, let's think about the ABL GUI for a second. What is it? Well, first of all, it's Windows. It is hard-coded to Windows. So if you have an ABL GUI application, it's a Windows application. It doesn't run on Mac. It doesn't run on mobile. It doesn't run on Linux or Unix, uh, and it doesn't run in the web. And, and the web, the web is it, right? I mean, the web is what everybody wants. No one wants Windows. I mean, I, I don't know when the last time was somebody was asking for a Windows app and that that was their preference, but it's been a while. Um, the web is where people want to be. And Progress even knows this. They, they say, hey, you know, here's what you do. You take Telerik, you know, all this... Uh, Kendo UI stuff and you you write a whole new front end throw out your old screens Yeah, oh, we know you have 800 or a thousand or 1500 sc screens um, Now throw those out because they're not modern Write a whole new front end bolt it on you still have all the open edge stuff on the back, but uh, Yeah, that's the way to do it. So um, Forward says no, this is not the right idea um, we allow you to run your existing ABL GUI code, um, and we call this direct to web. We allow you to run it as a web application without doing a, a complete rewrite of all your screens into a new front end. This is totally unique. No one else has ever done this, including Progress. Progress cannot do this. All right, so I'm going to log in here um, to a uh, to our web client, all right, um, and this is in a uh, this is in a browser. Um, I'm, I'm you, you can see here, <laughs> all right. I can't. This is this is all inside the browser, right? Okay, so I'm going to log in. I'm, I'm actually, this is converted ABL source code running as uh, on what we call our, our uh, virtual desktop mode of our web client. When I say virtual desktop, we're not actually connected to a real desktop. We're just kind of making it look like a desktop with a little task switcher and, you know, we've got your windows here that are in your ABL GUI and it, well, it should look really familiar. I mean, you may not know this app, but... You, you can see, um, you've, seen, <laughs> you've seen ABL code that looks just like this, right? I imagine. Um, you can even, you know, so we're, we're just kind of, what, what we've done here is we've got uh, a client built in HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript. And it works in all modern browsers. So, you know, it, it works on, IE and Safari and Chrome and uh, and Firefox, which is what I'm showing you here, um, and it, you know it connects via SSL, so we're, we're, we've got a, sec a secure connection. It doesn't have the lock, the proper lock um, symbol because I'm using localhost and you can't get a proper certificate for localhost, of course. Um, but it's it's connected to the Java. Um, the converted Java backend, basically, which is running on Linux, and uh, the converted app runs in Java. The converted app is not really running here. This is just a thin client. It does the presentation and the user interaction only. Um, it's pure JavaScript. There's no plugins. This is not an applet. Um, we're not running Java Web Start. Um, so if you're familiar with the Progress Web Client, that's essentially their version of Java Web Start, where they kind of auto-deploy 
oh, you know, dynamically deploy onto your lo and do a local install. That's not what we're doing here. This is truly in the browser only, a, you know, a thin JavaScript based client. This is not terminal server. This is not Citrix. We're not doing some kind of uh, VNC or RDP or remote, you know, remote uh, desktop approach. Um, we're not using OpenEdge. We're not using Windows. This is not connected to some kind of VM where OpenEdge or Windows is running. This is connecting directly to a Java backend. So, you know, what, what we've done here um, is we've, instead of hard coding our, our um, kind of, right, we've written an ABL replacement in our runtime, right? And instead of hard coding it to Win32 like Progress does, or even to some kind of cross-platform framework like Swing or Eclipse's uh, SWT. We built our implementation with an abstraction layer where the, the lowest layer is a UI uh, platform level driver. Okay, So the, the, all the windows that you're seeing here and the frames and the widgets, um, and event processing, uh, you know, all of that's implemented at a higher level in our in, in our forward code. Some of that higher level is common with the character mode. In fact, quite a bit is common with the character mode implementation. But some is GUI specific. It's just not using the widgets for the specific platform. So we're not using HTML widgets here. In fact, this, this window with that is that is displayed in a you know in a uh, kind of pixel for pixel rendering of what you would see in windows this kind of this thing that is like that appears to be a window is a canvas it's an html canvas um, and we're then manipulating it and rendering in it and handling the event processing in javascript but these are not html widgets in any in any way shape or form we've basically we've We've implemented the behavior, look, feel, and, and, and complete, <laughs> complete execution of the Win32 um, functionality that progress relies upon, but we've done it in a way that's, that's abstract. Um, so the, the driver provides all the like, you know, low-level primitives for drawing, like drawing lines, rectangles, um, drawing text, images, handling keys and, and mouse input. So you can, you know, here I'm using uh, uh, keys, here I'm using my mouse. Um, you know, and, and essentially what we do is we have, we have two drivers. We've got a swing driver, um, which is, uh, and, and which is, you know, using, the, well, I'll, I'll show that in a moment. And we've got this web, web driver, and the web driver has two, two modalities. It's got what we call this virtual desktop mode where the entire application is, is kind of looks, looks and feels very, like pretty much exactly like it was in Windows. Um, but the web client also has an embedded mode, which is even more exciting. I'm going to show that later. Um, we also have the ability of adding a driver for mobile, which we'll probably do later, but we don't have a mobile client at this time. I'm going to log out of this. And I'm going to bring up the Swing client um, so that you have a better idea. So remember, here on the web, this is, <laughs> this is in your browser. Here, we've got it on your desktop. Now, yes, I know it looks like Windows because we've got the Chrome on the Windows that even kind of looks, and we, we, we're looking, using a, uh, a classic, Windows classic theme um, one of the things we still have to do is we're going to provide uh, Windows 8 and slash 10 theming and allow you to do some skinning as well um, and, and totally customize your colors and fonts and, and, and some of that. But right now what you're seeing is a, a Windows Classic theme. Um, so, so everything is drawing, um, drawing you know, in, that, in that kind of um, form. And it's... You know, we can have multiple, as you're seeing here, we're, we're, we have multiple clients, even different kinds of clients, um, connecting to the same server at the same time. Um, so I'll log in in both. Again, you'll, you'll kind of, so you can see 
um, <laughs> just just how close everything is. There, there are some very minor differences in the font support today. Um, we we have 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 a little bit of work left on on our font support on the website, but in the web driver, but not the swing driver is is uh, closer in its rendering. We we don't. We haven't duplicated the Windows font rendering engine. Um, we're using in we're using the the UI platforms font rendering, so the browser's font rendering in this case, uh, and uh, Swing's font rendering in this case, and we have have some things to do to make it a little closer. Otherwise, it's kind of pixel for pixel identical with what you would see in progress. Um, so you know you can see in this case. Our, the the swing driver is actually you know it's it's a fat client app it it basically is the equivalent of the progress client uh, and it's completely integrated with you know the the local operating system the only difference it's it is slightly better than the progress approach because in progress you actually have to deploy your app to the client in in this you just deploy the forward client itself but not the app the converted app runs on the remote Java server, um, which, which actually is is kind of a, a pretty nice improvement over progress. But but really, this is still um, a uh, you know a it, it's still a uh, uh, fat client approach. Okay, so back to the web client. Um, one thing to note is these tabs. The tabs are not. ActiveX. I know your Windows code. We don't support ActiveX. Um, this is we've we, we've got actually a, a pure ABL implementation of these tabs using just ABL features, um, drawing rectangles and images and, and various various kind of advanced usage of 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 those um, of those cases. So we're we're make instead of using the tab control that is ActiveX based, um, we're, we've got pure ABL here um, that's been converted, of course. We we support other than the ActiveX, we support all the other ABL GUI widgets, including browse, as you can see here, right? This is a browse. Um, uh, our login panel. So this this login is was hand coded ABL GUI code, um, but this here is actually ADM ADM2, an ADM ADM2 application. Um, so all these other tabs, all this other code is ADM2. And, uh, you know, so think about what that means. We're, we're supporting uh, all the dynamic and static widget capabilities that are used by ABL, a, 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 ADM2 apps. We're supporting all the super procedures, persistent procedures, uh, pu uh, publish, subscribe, dynamic database, all, all the complexity of, of, those, of those applications, we're supporting that all behind the scenes in our, in our runtime. Well, and obviously we converted the code too, but, um, and we did that 100% automated, but, but really the, the hardest part of it is, is in the runtime and making it all work with compatibility. Uh, so, you know, you can see here the different widget types we've, we've got, um, you know, we've, we're supporting, you know, all the combo box uh, capabilities and it's all integrated with, with browse and we can, you know, kind of reopen our query and all of that. We've got, here's a fill in with date as a data type. We support all the data types. We've got, we're even supporting, this here is a, an image um, button. These are flat buttons over here. Well, I'll show you in a second. Um, we've again, we're not using the, the ActiveX calendar control. We've got in this case our own um, ABL implementation. It's uh, we still have a little bit of performance work to make to to make that a little faster. But it it it's you can see here it's uh, it's working. It's a dialogue actually. It's a modal dialogue. So you can see see here um, we can't. Um, we can't click or interact with this other stuff behind. We can only interact with this. Um, and basically, you know, so here's image buttons. Here's a regular 3D button here. These are flat buttons up here. We, we support menus too, but we, we just, it was easier for us to just do um, the flat buttons there. Uh, 
we can go to here. We have a page here for guests. Uh, we can bring up the update screen again. We support all the same the layout capabilities and and that you would expect. Um, we you know we we support multiple levels of dialogues. Uh, you know it's it's all kind of as as you would expect. Um, you know, it, it, this really is your ABL code uh, running. I'm not going to save that, all those random changes. Um, you know, <laughs> it, this is kind of what you would expect out of, out of your ABL app, right? It, it looks just like it, it was running on Windows in OpenEdge. It's not. There is no OpenEdge here. There is no Windows here. Um, let me cancel out of that. Let me go to the rates. This is fun. You can see we're... we're um, we're using image the images um, here, and you know you can it, it we can well, <laughs> actually if you go to the top you see here um, this is the current rate we're in this window right here. If we click show past rates, you can see it's it's refreshing this with with you know basically reopening the query with a different where clause. Um, all right, so, and then rooms. Um, in this one, this is an interesting one. So let's see, room 107 um, will go into, it says C view. Uh, room 107, double C view, right. So we're gonna update that. Okay, again, this tree control is not a, um, it's not, uh, the ActiveX control that you're used to. This is an ABL um, rendering. I'm using the keys here, but I could also, you know, click on the mouse, with the mouse, and uh, so here we're going to make. You, you see, 107 is now luxury suite instead of a double C view. Um, so, you know, I'm going to exit out of here, but I, I want to highlight. Uh, this is something that progress cannot do. They can't bring your ABL GUI into the web. There is, they have no direct to web approach. Open Edge can't do this. What, what they're pitching you on is bolting on a front end in the name of modernization, right? I mean, essentially they say, oh, you know, you, you need to modernize your app, rewrite your entire front end, um, and, you know, throw away the thousands of screens you've got written that you've been working on for, for years. Spend years, or for decades, spend years rewriting all that from scratch using a modern toolkit and then bolt it onto the front of your Open Edge app. And all will be good. Um, so that's their pitch. They, they're making that pitch because they have no other, no other approach. The ugly truth of it is, it's going to take years and you're going to spend a huge amount of money rewriting your entire UI. And then the bolt-on, it's, it's going to be fragile, right? It's going to be uh, complicated because you're basically adding in another layer in front of the layer you've already got. Uh, and so it's a hybrid solution. You still have all the open edge stuff you had before. That means you've got all the same problems you had before. You still have to maintain an open edge team that, you know, people that are hard to find, Right? It's not easy to hire open edge people. You've got all the old costs because you still have to pay progress for all of, you know, every year for all of, all of the open edge environment. Um, but, but now you've got new costs and new problems. You've got to maintain a new team um, or, and have new costs for all the new front end infrastructure you've got to put in place. Um, but hey, at least you'll look modern even though you're still stuck on the ABL. Um, well, our take is that, you know, doesn't it make sense to, um, to leverage your current screens? So, you know, why rewrite? Rewrite if you want or the pieces you want, but leverage what you've got. All right. Uh, now, this is the second mode of our web client. This is what we call the embedded web client or, or embedded mode for the web client. So um, what you're seeing here is, um, well, let me, let me log in. 
Okay, so what you're seeing here is a custom HTML5, CSS, JavaScript application. All this out here, okay, this is not converted ABL. So from, from this black kind of menu area and the header, this footer, and all of this stuff over here is, is just a custom app. We, we wrote it um, just as a demonstration. We wrote it um, using jQuery and Bootstrap and Dojo. Um, but you could use any tools or any frameworks. It just doesn't really matter uh, because, you know, w w the piece that is integrated with, um, with your converted app is this right here. This should look familiar, right? It should look really familiar um, because it's, it is the converted code, but it's running in an iframe. All right, so in this iframe, we've loaded the forward uh, JavaScript-based web client in embedded mode. We've, in, when we're in embedded mode, we remove the Chrome. So there's no title bar, there's no uh, min-max and close buttons. There's no, in a, in a window that has, um, in a progress window that has a message, uh, a message um, bar and a status bar and all that, that's missing too, right? Um, and, you know, but so we've taken all the Chrome away and we've put it into this iframe in a way that can integrate with your larger custom application. Um, and as I mentioned before, we're going to provide support for Win Windows 8, Windows 10 themes and for skinning. So you'll be able to make this kind of integrate in look and feel with your custom app. Um, and, you know, your custom app basically controls what is in here. So this is the custom app. This is not converted code. So if I click on this, it, it, you can see here at the bottom of the screen, um, you know, the, the, the link uh, that is going to my custom app, and the custom app basically controls what is in the iframe. So it communicates with that iframe through cross-document messaging and, um, and controls what it's loading from, from the forward server. Um, all right, let's go to, um, let's see. We, well, let's, let's, let's start here and show you how it handles modal dialogues because this is kind of interesting. So web, web uh, like JavaScript doesn't have the concept of uh, really of a modal dialogue, right? You don't bring up, you know, so, but we, we actually are, are duplicating the, this, um, <laughs> this modality capability by, by not letting you do any interaction with the stuff behind and graying it out to give a clue to the user that it's modal. Um, and, and then we, you know, <laughs> we could even allow multiple levels of that, of modal dialogues. And again, we, we're giving you that clue that this is, you have to interact with this before you, you can move on with the main part of your application. So we, we've kind of tried to do it in a smart way to handle the way ABL code is really written, which is very often heavy in dialogues. Um, and drilling down into multiple levels of, of dialogues. We support all of that. Um, let's go to rooms. You can see we've got all the, all the, uh, you know, all the, the same um, uh, screens we had before. We've, we've just, you know, are controlling them through, through the main application. And um, let's, let's change, uh, well, remember we, we changed, um, I guess we edited luxury suite. I'm going to um, I, I'm going to uh, do an update here on that. Uh, change it. Oh, we'll we'll change it to twin. Say okay. So room 107 is now twin. Let's go over here um, and do something that would show. So remember, pro progress doesn't automatically refresh. So they don't they don't send updates around telling people to update. But notice that this. 107 is still saying tree view. If, if I refresh, there it is now saying twin. So again, we're, we're connected to the same multi-user backend Java converted system, right? And we're just um, um, making, making changes that, you know, I can, I can go back in here and, and do an update on this side. It's, um, it's completely um, dynamic here. 107 is now this. Um, 
and I'll, I'll go in over here and do something that will, yeah, 107 single superior. So again, you know, it's, this is a multi-user system, just like you have today. Uh, we have multiple clients all working at the same time. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a real solution. Uh, but <laughs> so, okay, right now you're saying this is, this is some kind of Jedi mind trick. Um, no, no, it's not. It's just really cool. <laughs> it's, um, okay, and it gets better. Let me show you one more thing. Um, <laughs> one more thing. Uh, so, see this piece over here? Uh, this piece is, uh, is pure JavaScript, but it's got data that looks a whole lot like the data in our main application. Um, so, we, we basically are, uh, we, we have a JavaScript um, interface that allows the custom app to call into the converted APL code. Basically, it's like a JavaScript client for app server, all right, but it's calling the converted APL code and not progress. So um, we, when we hit refresh here, you'll see that the numbers are gonna change. Um, so if, if I change the date to the 20th, uh, notice that uh, double king bed, now there are, there are seven available because on uh, January 5th, there was one booked and six available, but on the 20th, um, there's none booked. All right, and if I go out to the 31st, you'll see that, that there are no single rooms booked on that time at that time um, so this is all live data going but it's 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 a essentially it's a completely custom um, interface so we have the full capability that progress is telling you you should do uh, of writing front-end screens and and backing it with your your code your existing code um, of course it's converted code it's not open edge back there and we don't require you to do this. You, you don't have to do this. You can, you can basically find your way, uh, you know, the right point for you on the continuum of 100% legacy and 100% custom new front end. You find your, or something in between, which is more likely what you really want to do. You, you might have some important screens or some new screens even that you want to do in, in a completely new modern way, but then but, but the vast majority of your app is probably sitting there and you don't want to rewrite it. So you don't have to. You integrate it here. You know, it allows the full HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, custom front end, um, and full access to your code and data in converted ABL, but doesn't require that you do that. All right, so you're probably asking yourself right about now, why am I paying huge fees annually to progress where, where basically I'm just getting the right to ship my app or use my app internally, um, and progress doesn't even help me with the most important transition in the last two decades, which is getting to the web. Instead, they say, no, it's your fault for not keeping up and not modernizing. You need to modernize and write a whole new front end, throw out all your old UI, bolt this on, and keep paying us all that lovely money. Well, you know what? We're wondering the same thing. Why wouldn't you try Forward? Forward gets you to Java and out of Open Edge. It does it with automation, and it gets you to web without a rewrite, without a hybrid bolt-on. And it's, a drop, it's still a drop and replacement for your ABL GUI, something progress can't do. It gives you the tools that you need to modernize and integrate with uh, your, you know, all, your, all your current code without throwing it all out. And you can move at your own pace to, you know, and modernize as much or as little as you want. And, get this, you save all that money while you do it. Forward can, you know, hopefully what you've seen today is Forward, it's... It, it can handle your ABL GUI app. And, uh, well, we believe that it is just really cool and it changes everything. So thank you very much for your time today. I hope, uh, hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, you can find out the full details for this at beyondabl.com. 
subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more videos, uh, or follow us on social media to keep up with things. Thanks again.